Good morrow, and welcome to Judging by the Cover, forsooth, where we'll be judging Defender of the Crown, which I would like to confirm right away is not a porn game. By the cover. Now I know what you're thinking, of course Defender of the Crown isn't a porn game, Yahtzee Crozier. It's, as everybody knows, a landmark strategy game released for the Commodore Amiga in 1986. Well, listener, apparently that wasn't made entirely clear to whoever designed the box. First of all, get a load of that lady draped over the armoured bloke's horse, wearing the crown that presumably has gotten all these defenders in a tizzy. At first glance, I thought her eyes were glowing white pupils on a purple background because she's possessed by Satan. Then I zoomed closer and realised, oh, she's just got her eyes shut and is wearing two spadefuls of eyeshadow, making her eyelids officially the most dressed part of her. One bump on the road and that outfit goes from off the shoulder to off the clitoris. The last time I saw a cleavage like that, I endeavoured to mine it for rare ore deposits. This is the PC version, and the interesting thing about the NES version is that it's exactly the same scene but entirely redrawn for no apparent reason, unless the artist on the localization team was trying to look busy for the management consultants. You'll note that Princess Helpless Tits is a lot more engaged with her surroundings in this version, as she reacts with terror at her captor's upraised weapon. Probably because of what's going on with the shaft there. Take off the axe part of the weapon, and what's left looks like it's been designed for very suspect purposes indeed. Interestingly, while the human characters have been redrawn to look respectively more human, more scary, and less like an angry dad at his kid's football game, the horses have transitioned to the NES cover largely unchanged. The white one looking surprised and going, Oh, Howard, why are you wearing that tinfoil hat? And the brown one going, oh, Western democracy is a sham! Open your eyes, people! That's all very well, Yahtzee, but what was all that about mistaking the game for porn? So far, your only evidence is a knobbly shaft and a woman who looks like she just spent the whole afternoon making use of one. Well, I haven't shown you the back of the box yet. Let's start with the blurb. Cinemaware is adult entertainment. That draws a pretty firm line under the matter for me, but let's keep analysing. A revolutionary new genre that pulls you emotionally into the story and characters. Yeah, I'd like to get pulled emotionally into her. Well, hey, the lads. In keeping with the whole Cinemaware conceit, the back of the box is made to resemble a cinema facade, with the screenshots arranged like their posters designed by someone with no imagination whatsoever. The ones on the left depict firstly a hot lady, and secondly the exact moment in the Cinemax film when stock saxophone music starts playing. The other set of screenshots are a little more abstract. Firstly, some men blowing very, very long horns. Secondly, a metaphorical image of the Redcoats storming the gates. Now take a look at the bloke buying a ticket. What a fucking class act we've got here. Singlet shorts and flip-flops. I know visiting the cinema isn't the grand social occasion it was in the early 20th century, but at least put some proper shoes on. Those floors ain't sticky for now. Clearly this is a somewhat down-market theatre that exclusively shows content of a quite family-unfriendly nature. I mean, the guy's already got an anticipatory hard-on so pronounced it's pulling the fabric of his shorts straight up his bum crack. No wonder April O'Neil has shown up to get the undercover scoop on this den of vice. Oh, incidentally, nice job trying to cover up the name of the film from the original photo. I certainly can't tell that it originally read Running Scared, probably the 1986 Billy Crystal vehicle. I've seen captures that were harder to make out than that. But speaking of making out, let's get back to the blurb. The second paragraph is mainly going on about charging steel and clashing steeds and all that bollocks, but it does remember to bookend the text with references to lusty wenches and many a beautiful damsel. But then in the very first bullet point we talk about rescuing our lady, singular. So either all that lusty wenches talk was misleading us, or we're a philandering bastard, and that Norman prison will seem quite rosy after she gets us home and looks inside our britches. Also, note the promise of easy-to-use mouse or joystick controls with no typing required. We are literally advertising that this game can be played one-handed. 
And if you want one last piece of sizzling eroticism from this cover, look no further than that gorgeous sex pot in the lower right. Hello, ladies, growls master designer Kellen Beak. You know what they say, once you go beak, you'll be back within the week. <laughs>